why I am here and how can I add to the valuable day that you just lived today in building your spirit and empowering yourself to see how you can be better people, more empowered and use your energy much better. Today I learned a lot from the other speakers and it was very inspiring for me as well. And usually in my life, I learn from my students. They give me a lot of power. The thing is, we go to all these conferences in this world and we just listen, get out of the box, get creative, take a risk, jump from the window, <laughs> do whatever. And you know, you go out from the, the room and you go to your car and you say, oh, I wish I am creative. I wish I can take a risk. I don't think I can afford it. This is beautiful. This is very nice. But not me, maybe her, maybe him, but not now, not me. Well, this is what I see in the eyes of my students when I teach them. And uh, I don't treat them actually as a teacher. I treat them as um, a peer or somebody who is very close to them, which irritates them a lot, by the way. But it's fine, they get used to it after the third day. So anyway, we start inspiring them and asking them, guys, we want you to give good, positive ideas, to have a beautiful change. What do you suggest? No, 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 I can't. There is corruption in my country. No, no, I can't. There is rules and regulations that I cannot cross. There is this, there is that. There is always this hanger that they put on it, reasons for not to do anything. After a few days of talking to them and actually pushing them out of the room for the idea, because getting the idea is the most difficult thing. Get the idea. Just tell me the idea. I don't want you to do anything about it now. Just tell me what is the one thing that you would love to change and you, don't, you see it every day and you don't like it and it is in your system and you want just to get rid out of it. So we push them out of the class for one hour and I take the mobiles. So no boyfriends, girlfriends, messages, pictures, da da da. Just go out and it's actually useful for us as well if we once just take a drive or a walk without any other element and just watch. Use your five senses. Smell, touch, look, feel it. The things that are around you just for a walk and they go out around the university or the place that we are training at and they come back and they tell me things that they saw and they don't like. One of them told me once, no, 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 this is impossible. I cannot do anything about it. This is, uh, my country is very difficult and that was in Lebanon and we don't have a president since three years. What are you talking about? This is going to be a catastrophe to, to go there. Well, actually, every problem is an opportunity. Sometimes the, having the problem is half of your solution. It will make you the successful person because you know the solution. You just have to Take the step and do it. We encourage those students. They, come, they came back from outside of the university and the one thing that she saw, and this girl was very, very, very naughty girl. We call her like very difficult to deal with, very difficult. She doesn't even write notes. She draws what she thinks and she's very difficult to convince. Anyway, her name is Maya. Maya came back from after 10 minutes. She didn't continue one hour. She came back and she said, uh, I saw a kid who is eating from the trash. And I was like, just at the door of the university. And that is in Lebanon, the L'Ecole Supérieure des Affaires. So I was like, okay, so what can we do about this? And she said, well, I hope that we can give him food. But why just him? Why not the others? We kept inspiring her and teaching her to use the power of partnership. So there is a, a bunch of restaurants in front of uh, this university. She learned how to do partnerships with them. And Maya came back to us with 70 partnerships with the restaurants. 
Today, after three years, she fed quarter of a million person in Lebanon. She owns her own NGO, and we tried to convince this girl to register it as a social enterprise so that she will sustain her life, her own expenses. So she has 40, 60 from the money that she gets. From where she gets the money, some of the restaurants refused to give the, the food. They said, for food safety, I will not give you the food. I will give you one dollar after every, um, after every customer or from the pocket of every customer. Three months later, she calls me and she said, Lina, I have $30,000 at home. I was like, what? We are corporate social responsibility. You cannot do this. You have to register. And that was, and she registered and she had her NGO. The thing is, is in the moment when you take the risk to fight the system or to do the meeting or to change something, Maya herself was very difficult in the first presentation. She is the one student who stood up and said, this country doesn't have this and this and this and this and we cannot do anything. And you are Jordanian and you are here and you don't know nothing of what is happening in Lebanon. I was like, fine. But now, her success is ideal that she is awarded a scholarship to study in England, $10,000 from King Abdullah in Jordan. I don't know how many awards from the institutions in Lebanon. She's like, I need an appointment to talk to her now. <laughs> so, like Maya, like this, the, this step, the one and the first step is the one thing that I want you to do today. Why you don't do it? The reason is, by nature, us, the human being, are very stingy. We are stingy. Even though you think you are a very uh, generous person, and I will prove it to you just now. I want you all, please, to take a very deep breath, full capacity. Take it out. Again. Out. You feel good? OK. What is the normal breathing now? Try to, to monitor the normal breathing. Like this? This is how stingy you are. <laughs> you have the power to give your body, your body, not the neighbors, <laughs> the full capacity to breathe, to give it oxygen, to give it power, to give it positiveness, and you only give it that. The only moment that you take a deep breath is after a problem is finished, a meeting that you wish that it would get over with, but you, you have it, it's in your hand. And you don't give it. Percentage of oxygen rise more than 60% in your body. Positiveness, power for all the body. The cycle of the blood is much better, but you don't do it. And the reason is us being a step, a little bit stingy to ourselves. So, how we can get more positive and more generous and how we can do something further and to push ourselves to take the risk. We will need to think about what do you want. Have you ever thought if you are actually in the right job or in the right place or with the right husband <laughs> or boyfriend or in the right country Sometimes you are there because it's, it's there. You just, I was born Muslim, so I am Muslim. I, am, I was born uh, in uh, the UAE, I stay here. I, w I want to do this because this is what is around you. But what actually, actually, if you sit with yourself and you discuss it, what do you want? Like if the fairy came today and said, what do you want? This is another proof that the human being is very stingy. You wake up in the morning, 
and you get dressed based on the person that you're going to meet. You uh, design yourself and your perfume based on the pers person that you're going to meet. You eat based on the day. The person you're going to meet, you give him your time, your attention, your smiles, everything you have, maybe your money even. You'll invite him or her for lunch or dinner, or maybe it's a business deal. The day runs, you start, you get dressed, and, uh, and there is this one second that you look at, at the mirror for a glance, not while you're making the makeup, after that. This l one second <coughs> after you are done with shaping yourself the way you want, and then you look, hmm, this is what I want, this is good enough, I'll live with this. And then, huge amount of energy is given for the mom and the dad and the kids and the husband and the boss and the people, everybody that you meet. Then you come back home at the end of the day and the other one second that you give to yourself is right before you sleep. It was a good day. No, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> good night. <laughs> the end. Well, what I advise you, have a cup of coffee with yourself. Meet yourself. Talk to yourself and try to understand what do you want. The minute that you know what do you want is the minute that might change your life and push you to take the risk. I'm not here talking about taking the risk that you really need to make a massive change in your life. Just make something that makes you happy. Happiness is the most important thing that we all look for. And just take the risk, take this small step, it might be actually smaller than you think. Very minor thing that might make you happy. I will tell you a story about Khadr. Khadr also, he is a Lebanese student, I'm teaching him now this year. He is um, from the police, from uh, uh, the security police of Lebanon, 25 years old. He came to the class, he's from Tarablos, from Tripoli. So he came to the class that we teach at uh, L'Ecole Supérieure des Affaires, which is a very elite university and very, very expensive. But I made sure in my agreement with the universities to allow me to bring students from all over the areas and from all over the country, not only for the ones who can pay. So Khadr came over and he attended a course of 10 days about corporate social responsibility and designing your own enterprise, <coughs> social business. So what Khadr did is he, he tried to solve the problem of environment. Lebanon now is suffering from the trash issues, if you've heard about it, and they are not recycling it, and there is a government issue there. He lived in Tripoli. In Tripoli, there is people uh, who suffered from the war. So he picked five men and five women, and he called them the green men and the green women. And by the way, Khadr means green, so I called him the green man. <laughs> so what he did, he inspired 5,000 families, visiting them all, collecting the trash at night with the hands of the, the green men and the green women. They cleaned the whole area. They taught the families how to recycle. He rented a warehouse on his own, from his money, $400, $50 for the car that collected the trash, and he recycled them with, the, with those uh, green men and green women, and in one month, he made $16,000. In one month. What he did with the money, $5,000, he gave it to the green woman, $5,000 for the men, and five for his expenses and whatever they needed, and he took 1,000 for himself. And again, I told you that I inspire people and try to push them to do something and to do a social change. So this is the social change that he did and it's going to be his company from now on. But the beautiful thing about Khadr is that he actually managed to make a sustainable income for those people who, are, who were jobless, without a hand, without an eye, and they actually really, really, really lost hope in life. And from the problem 
that is the waste and the trash and the chaos, a solution was created and jobs and money and happiness. And you can't believe how proud they are with what they have done. It is our success story for this year. And I will leave you with a small note for the video. Stop thinking about what everyone wants. Stop thinking about what I want. What he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Well, I hope that today you will have a little bit of time for yourselves and you will understand what do you want and make the best out of it. Thank you.